So I kind of wanted to uh, show a little bit about driving in the winter here. I know there's lots of winter driving videos and there's different ideas. Um, you've got the people that just get slick out, they drive 30 miles an hour and all the rest of us go around them. Um, then there's people that have different methods. One of the big ones here for safety is lots of following room. Really doesn't bother me if somebody's speeding out here on the highway. Uh, as long as they're leaving good following room, not running up close to people, you need some room to control things. One of the tricks with controlling things is you need to know each day how slick it is. Now, we'll start here in the yard, and uh, sometimes you do this out on the pavement, but here in the yard, uh, I like to start out, put, just put your vehicle in gear, and of course you can floor it and see whether or not it uh, spins how well. You can make quicker turns in the ice, not just because it's fun. And see how I pulled it back in four-wheel drive and went straight instead of turning? And it's actually something you'll do around town a lot of times where there's close maneuvering. You can spin a corner. You can control it. You don't have to do it crazy fast. Then come back when you want to go straight, kick it in four-wheel drive. You won't do that with automatic four-wheel drives or different controls. Also, don't forget, you need to know how quick you can stop. So sometimes you just stomp on the brakes. Something that's happening today because we're, uh, I don't know if it's, huh, okay, it's, it's locked up because we're down below 40 below now. It was a little warmer earlier. Uh, I think 40 below is as far as it was showing. That was why it wasn't showing them for a little bit. Uh, one of the other interesting things that happens when it gets chilly, you know, those are just normal ice things as far as the slickness and testing it. But when it gets chilly, well, first off, when it's chilly, we got pretty good traction today. Usually I'm out here spinning around and it spins a lot. I stopped in 10, 15 foot from, I don't know how fast I was going, but it, it stopped good. The biggest part of not stopping today though was there was 30 foot before that that you didn't really see um, where I'd push the brake and absolutely nothing happened. The stopping was pretty short, but initially the brake fluid is really stiff today. It doesn't want to move. So you've got a little bit of delay before it starts braking, more so than just your reaction time. We've also got, while we've got good traction um, on the snow and ice, your tires are harder. So it's not as good a traction as it would be like 20 below. 20 below, your tires, the ice is good, plus your tires are more flexible. 40 below, your tires start getting hard. So you start losing some of your traction again. But here in the yard, it's pretty good. It'll be a little not as good out on the road. Um, on older vehicles, I've had this problem, not so much on newer ones, but the clutches. Driving the manuals, you'll sometimes this hydraulic clutch is pretty good mechanical cable clutches are fine but you get older i used to drive a 63 dodge swept line and it had a hydraulic clutch and it was forever uh you go to let the clutch out and you could wait two seconds for it to come out uh, and then when it got really cold like 55 60 below you had to actually pull it out put your foot underneath it and start pulling the clutch up to be able to go which made it really difficult to control. Anyway, we'll go out on the, the highway. In the winter time, I generally, and you'll see the windows are probably gonna start frosting over a little bit as we go, but in the winter time, I will just leave my hubs. There's somebody made a boo-boo coming out of the bar. Yeah. They did real good the other day. <laughs> you see that one where they drove along the whole front? Yeah. Digging, digging. The, I saw them while, as they were coming out of there, and I was like, yeah, I'm just not even getting close to these lunatics. Uh, um, another thing is we have moose lights on a lot of our vehicles, which it was in a dark. Uh, we just can't really show those right now, but they're illegal. For the most part, the cops are pretty nice. Don't ticket people. If you blinded somebody that you know and caused a wreck or something, you'd be responsible. 
sense, but uh, you're out away from traffic, away from people, turn on your extra bright lights, and it's, it's a regular thing that people do. Generally, if you are doing it the way you should, as soon as you see someone else coming the other way on the road, you just shut them off and go to standard high beams. A few people don't do that. Some people come up and tailgate you, have on their highlights, and um, there's been some light wars over it. But all in all, even with the light wars, we get along pretty good, and I would say probably 20% of the people up here have the illegal uh, extra bright moose lights. Uh, years ago, I would say 50% did, and way back, maybe only 5 or 10% because they were real expensive lights. Uh, and because people were concerned about the fact they were illegal. As time has gone on, people have been concerned less about the fact that they're, and they're not illegal to have on your vehicle, they're illegal to use on the highway. So as long as nobody's around when you use them, while it's technically illegal because you're using them on the highway, it's not illegal by the intent. So, who knows? This fog we've got uh, showing up here is what they call ice fog. It's not quite heavy enough here to where you can see the crystals in the air. You'll see that. Uh, you'll see just bright shiny crystals when it gets real thick but it's ice that's in the air it's not it's not moisture it's it's actual little ice crystals it comes from the inversion uh, we'll drive into town see if we can get where it's a little bit thicker you can see some of it uh, if we look out over the valley here see some of it setting there a little bit more that away And uh, yesterday it was real, real thick where you could really see it, but it's got to get down below where it stays below 40 below for, for a week or better before you really get that nice crystals that you see in the air where you can really see the ice. The only reason I know it's ice fog today is because it's cold out. It's really nothing I can tell about it that's any different than regular fog. You can tell there again that it was slick. You look at the ground, at the pavement, and you get to where you can kind of tell where there is and isn't ice, but sometimes you make a mistake. So um, when you make a mistake and you throttle it up, it's time to back off as you're going sideways or pull it into four-wheel drive. <coughs> and you may still need to back off. And that's point two. When you are um, spinning like I did there in the yard, it works a lot better, a lot better control, continued driving forward if you have posi and your positive traction in your vehicle. If you have a two-wheel drive vehicle, pause traction is almost necessary so you can get going on the snow and the ice. Lots of weight in the back of a pickup, um, bags of sand in the back of your car will help if it doesn't have pause traction. And it helps even with the pause traction too. Now, when you do that sliding sideways, you're giving it throttle. If you're just in two wheel drive, the back end will spin around. If you're in four wheel drive, the back end will spin and one of your front tires will go to spinning. The other tire will still be steering. So you get a little bit of a back end swing, but not so much. It still swings the same, but not as dramatically. Now, if you have, which is very rare, but like the older Scouts and some of the Jeeps came from the factory <clears throat> with the posse front end, or if you put one in, when you have the posse front end, then it tends to do more of just a standard drifting, just drifts sideways more, a uh, little kind of a, feels sort of like a centrifugal force, but you don't get that, that rapid whipping so much when you've got posi all the way around. Oh yeah, we get these frost heaves. <laughs> 
The other lane uh, here doesn't have as many of them. That's one of the reasons why a lot of people don't go out and pass right there. I always forget about that until after I start going over them. Here we got dry pavement for a little bit again, so I kicked it back in two-wheel drive. Some people just leave it in four-wheel drive almost all the time. They just, um, and if you're an inexperienced driver, it might be the better way to go because you're going to have better control. But you also are tearing up the vehicle. The big thing you're tearing up is the front drive line, the front differential. I had one that uh, one day I'd left it in, kicked in, and didn't know I had left it kicked in. It was winter time, but I went a couple miles on pavement, um, and it had problems already. But I think that was what pushed it over the top, and it just tore the ring and pinion out of the front end of an old Dodge I had. That uh, was on my 1970 crew cab. Any little driving tips, thoughts, anything you got, Bert? No, it pretty well. Some of this stuff, you just have to be doing it to remember it, think about it. Uh, it's always interesting when it first becomes winter here. First off, uh, you've got people that are used to summer driving. They're 10 foot apart from the bumpers and a lot of accidents come. You get people that have never driven on ice before and they think because their friend can do it, they can do it with no new experience. Even though I'd driven on ice some with uh, freezing rain, which warmer temperature water is actually slicker than just snow and ice that's been pushed down. And uh, anyway, lots of accidents. There's a few corners that uh, people used to just like to set out there and get where you can watch and see all the accidents from the new people as they run off the road because it can be quite entertaining. Usually not too many like uh, deaths or anything because people are moving slow. But there are a lot of 15 to 25 mile an hour wrecks from people that just have no idea how to drive. Another thing that happens, and this is in the springtime, you'll get extra ice on the road where there wasn't ice. And people talk about the frost coming up. And it's really not the frost coming up. What it is is there's more moisture in the air and the frost, the cold ice that's in underneath the pavement causes the condensation <coughs> and a lot of times it turns right to ice condensation on the road that you'll see in the springtime and due to the difference in the temperature between the warmer wet air and the cold pavement so it looks to a person that doesn't know any different it looks like there's frost coming up through the pavement but the pavement's sealed it's not coming up it's just condensation the effects of the frost are coming up though because as the frost melts out it underneath gives up its, its uh, well, takes on the heat. It uh, freezes the moisture from the air. And yeah, the coldest is when it's right at 32 degrees, not the coldest, the slickest, excuse me. It's when it's right at 32 degrees. You can see uh, another thing that happened, you see how up, straight up from the power plant, the smoke coming out over there because it's, uh, it's cold out. So it gets to rise way up. It comes back down and settles down further away. Most of what you're looking at is moisture, which is why you see it more in the winter time than in the summertime. And you'll see another thing if it's light at night, and I don't really understand why it happens, but you will see lights that come straight up off of the lights. And it's kind of a unique phenomena to look at, but uh, it's gotten enough of a daytime now that we won't, won't be seeing that. I do annoy people a lot of times pulling in and then making more space because I don't like to follow close to people. I like to leave room just in case. It 
Sometimes to leave room, I uh, go faster than a group. Sometimes I go slower. And I try to not travel at the same speed as the groups because that's where the accidents happen the most. You can see there's pavement in the middle here, now a little ice showing back up. Now this is, this is somewhat of ice all the way here. And just uh, cause we're gonna test the braking out here again on the pavement. You have to be ready in case your brakes lock up uneven, especially when it's cold. <coughs> One friend of mine, he uh, has passed away now, but he used to say that he did lots of darting and swerving and stuff all winter long to make sure that people stayed further away from him. <laughs> made, it, made it look like he was drunk so that the uh, so the tailgaters wouldn't stay so close to him. Now we're getting into a little bit of ice fog. The thing that used to be bad here was when we'd have ice fog and there's some contaminants in the air, but it's really not as bad as a lot of people complain about. You go back into the 80s when we had all of the smog-equipped vehicles, early smog-equipped, with chokes, because you couldn't have a manual choke legally. They had to all have automatic chokes, and the automatic chokes wouldn't come off. So in amongst all of the ice fog was an awful lot of unburnt fuel awful lot of unburnt gasoline and you could you could smell it years ago and that was that was really the worst as far as the air quality and the electronic injection which doesn't have the same problem as the chokes has pretty well taken care of that problem Makes it a little harder with the ice fog to coming up on the uh, stoplights. Our stoplights here too, they are a longer yellow than what you have down in the States. I actually think they should make them a little bit longer yet, but then if they did, there would probably be more people trying to run through the yellows. And some people, because they are longer, um, consider the yellow a green light. And it doesn't always work out the best. The brakes, when I apply the brake, it's a little bit sluggish to apply. The other side of it, and some vehicles are terrible, like right there, it's like it, the brakes had applied. To take off again, you've actually got to fight against the brakes a little bit because the brake fluid stayed in the cylinders. Helps, of course, if you bring the vehicle fresh out of a uh, garage, as uh, Austin re re uh, comments, whatever, as Austin comments on it, he calls it princess parking. And, uh, usually these days when I'm going somewhere in the winter, he asks if his vehicle can come into princess parking. We have a little ways up here, one little corner I'm going to go around that really not showing anything different about driving but just the fact that with a regular full-size pickup you can't make the corner as a nice even corner in the summertime yet in the wintertime you can do it pretty easy by letting the tires spin and the back end come around. That's not part of the highway it's turning off of the highway into a business lot and for whatever reason, the way they made the lot, it's just uh, 
you need a, <clears throat> a car or uh, you need to spin your tires a little bit with a full-size pickup to get around it. And in the summertime, not if you're real careful. Now, the, the snow banks narrow it down a little bit, so that's part of it with this one. This one will actually make it because it turns sharper than my older pickups. But my older pickups, I literally do have to back up to go around this corner um, in the summertime. I have to back up and reposition. So I usually don't schedule to go on that corner. I usually go a different route. But in the winter time, I can go there just fine. few less people out on the road today because um, it's chilly. We've warmed up to 39 below. Actually, somehow we got that on Celsius, which is almost the same. Uh, there we go, 38 below Fahrenheit. Okay. This is the one here. Let me turn this corner. Then we can nicely turn it. No problems. Somebody might be asking why I am revving up the engine and double clutching, and it's because I'm double clutching because second gear synchronizer is out on this uh, transmission. The rest of it's fine, so we're not. I'm not going to fuss with it. If you do drive a uh, two-wheel drive pickup, and even a four-wheel drive pickup. Now this one, I don't have a lot of weight in the back, but uh, it's common on pickups. One of the real common ones people used to do was a plate of steel. Put a half-inch plate of steel or two in the bed of your pickup, so then you still had a pickup bed if it wasn't something too heavy that you could have room to put things in. Another common one, because it was cheap, is just gravel or sand. However, once you get enough gravel or sand in there to really give you good traction, you've used up a lot of your bed. Trouble with the steel is it's expensive now. And like this one, because I do haul, um, like to leave the bed full, I, I pretty much leave it empty, which makes the back end more squirrely. It doesn't handle as well as if it had a little more weight in the back on the ice. And it is common uh, when there's ice on the pavement and slicker than today, warmer temperatures, maybe even a little wet out. It's common for everybody to be doing around the speed limit or maybe even a little bit more, yet leaving space between each other. When they pack up and get close, then did you slow down? And there will be the occasional two or three people that are traveling together at 30 miles an hour, taking up both lanes. And it becomes aggravating to some as uh, it's not the norm here. I have seen some people, in fact, which is quite aggravating, I've seen some that on purpose are taking up two lanes trying to slow people down because they know that it's they're not capable of driving at a faster speed, so they block both lanes and purposely hold it down to 40 miles an hour. And <clears throat> it's amazing that there are not people from road rage from that because I know that has made a lot of people mad when they see that happening and uh, especially when they see those same people listing on Facebook that they did it on purpose. I'm calm enough. I just, I just back off another mile when I see that. I'm like, okay, I'm going to just back off further from these jokers because I don't need to be aggravated but I've heard some other people talk about that. The 
right now we're driving fairways under the speed limit because not good traction I'm on you know I'm on ice but still reasonably good traction but the ice fog I can't see what's coming up I can't see if somebody broke down it's normal rules of traveling anywhere really <clears throat> it's just as we're applying them here in Fairbanks if you can't see or can't control the vehicle you need to do something different have the warning lights for when it's about to turn yellow so we know we're safe to go through the green here <coughs> another thing too um, <coughs> when you're going up a hill when you're going up a hill and you're on ice as you go up the hill even if you're not feeling your vehicle slipping if you know that there's slick ice you're on you start slowing down a little bit as you go up the hill so that your momentum is carrying you and you slow down so that you're not trying to use so much horsepower that your tires spin and you lose control going up the hill of and course I saw an accident exactly like that going to Anchorage one year uh-huh he, uh, he just spun out going up the hill when he hit a patch of ice and went right into the ditch yeah. yeah, you can go fast up the hill, just don't try and, and keep up the same speed. You start out fast and slow down as you go up the hill when it's slick. Which the first key to that is go fast enough at the base of the hill. Now I don't recommend going fast enough when you first get on the road, I recommend avoiding hills. Um, as you learn driving on ice, then you can go faster and slow down as you come up the hill and that's the safest. Um, <clears throat> patches of ice even on the flat you look ahead and you see like there'll be not a real big one now but there'll be a little bit of one when we go to this overpass there'll be a short little space of ice you don't want to be speeding up or slowing down when you hit that uh, that intermittent patch of ice you want to try and keep your throttle where it's going to keep at the same speed so that you're not having a control issue this is just dry pavement right now. There, I think there's a little bit of ice up here further, but I have a reasonable amount of speed up to where I can slow down without a problem if there is some ice to deal with, little intermittent ice here. It's cleared off a lot. Um, as you drive on it more and more, the ice goes away. They were driving correctly as far as slowing down. They just didn't start at much of a speed at the bottom. So at the top of the hill, they're going to be going 15 miles an hour. I prefer to still be doing 30 or 40 at the top of the hill. And you can pick your lane. Like here, you look at the right lane, there's more ice than there is in the left lane, so the left lane's the better place to be. I think it switches halfway down the hill, which is uh, driving patterns of people where it's driven off more. <coughs> and yes, we're coming down into Fox again. Ice is more clear on the right lane here. Pavement is more clear, less ice. When the ice itself is clear, that's more ice. We've had that some years here where we have um, a lot of freezing rain. And it had kind of been the norm to have some of that for the last 10 years. This year we didn't get that in the fall. But there's been quite a few years here where we've had, just after it got down to freezing, you get freezing rain and we'd have an inch to three inches of ice that just stayed on the road all winter long, along with the, because uh, when you've got that heavy ice from the freezing rain, it stays there. You, you know, it doesn't just drive off like the snow does.
And that's one of the things that's different in Fairbanks than a lot of places that do get cold weather, get snow, our stays here. It'll change throughout the winter, but you can pretty well depend on the fact of being some cold, that's some frozen, some snow, some ice. There's going to be something here all winter long. So we actually got pretty good uh, traction today on the frozen snow here, snow ice. The steering is a little stiff today too, yeah. um, which is also part of uh, the brake, because this is a hydraulic boosted uh, <coughs> brakes on this one. So that's part of why my brakes are slow today besides just the brake fluid. Uh, and, uh, yeah, my steering is reacting a little slow, the power steering. Manual steering can really be bad and on a lot of your manual vehicles, they'll have thicker grease in the steering box than what you want. Older manual steering vehicles. Clutch didn't come out good enough to get that right. It, uh, anyway, you want to change that for oil. And then the oil will leak out of the box, so you will have to replenish it often. But older vehicles, you will find that oil is a necessity in fact, is uh, gear oil. If you just brought a vehicle up here from the lower 48 somewhere that isn't set up for Alaska, you're gonna have to change all the oils. Had to take a Datsun pickup 